Hello everyone, in this lecture today, I'm going to talk to you about what is Sanger sequencing, how does Sanger sequencing work, and what are the applications of Sanger sequencing. Let me first talk about what is Sanger sequencing. Sanger sequencing is also known a chain termination method. This is a method that is used for determining the nucleotide sequence of a DNA. Okay, Sanger sequencing is used for determining the nucleotide sequence of a DNA. So this method was developed by two-time Nobel laureate Frederick Sanger and his colleagues in the year 1977 and hence the name Sanger sequence. Why Sanger sequencing is called Sanger sequencing? Because it was developed by the scientist Sanger. So what are the different reasons that are required in Sanger sequencing? We require template DNA, we require DD NTPs that are called dideoxy NTPs that, that include ATP, T, DD, ATP, DD, TTP, DD, GTP, DD, CTP. And all of these dideoxy NTPs, they are fluorescently leveled with a different color. For ATP, we have green, red for a TTP, and blue for CTP, and so on. We also require polymerase, DNA polymerase. And of course, we need a DNTPs and of course, we need the primers. Okay. So then next question is, how does Sanger sequencing work? What are the different steps involved in Sanger sequencing? The first step of Sanger sequencing is primer annealing and chain extension. So we add all the reagents and DNA polymerase adds NTPs, these uh, DNTPs. Okay, and of course, as well as DDNTPs. So whenever DDNTPs gets added, chain extension gets stopped. Okay, so when NTP gets added uh, by the DNA polymerase, chain is extended. But if these DDNTPs, any one of these, if these get added, uh, then the chain uh, extension will be terminated. Okay, so DDNTP addition by the DNA polymerase that results in chain termination. Okay, so uh, why did the NTP uh, result in chain termination? Because these DDNTP they lack three prime hydroxyl group. Okay, they lack three prime hydroxyl group. Three prime hydroxyl group is required for phosphodiester bond formation. Uh, when DNA polymerase polymerase adds these DDNTPs at random, uh, at random chain chain is actually terminated so chain cannot extend okay so for here as shown that a um, dd atp has been added and the chain is terminated okay so this method actually the the random addition of dd ntps at different uh, uh, places uh, results in in uh, creation of millions and billions of copies of dna sequence of interest uh, that are terminated at random lengths by these DDNTPs. Okay, so then next step is uh, these uh, uh, the chain terminated oligonucleotides. Okay, chain terminated oligonucleotides. The segment of uh, these chain terminated oligonucleotides they are separated via electrophoresis. So then what happens is that the DNA sample it passes through the uh, the, the capillary gel electrophoresis. And the smaller fragments, they will move faster, okay? Smaller fragments will move faster. Uh, and uh, the, the larger fragments, they will move slower, okay? So that means that, uh, that we will have, you know, the fragments um, smaller moving faster and the larger fragments of the DNA moving slower in, in our capillary gel electrophoresis. DDNTP is fluorescently leveled. So this fluorescence is detected by our machine by our Sanger sequencing machine okay so then uh, what happens okay so we have these different fragments of dna's different fragments of dna's that uh, because after the addition of ddntps they have terminated here addition of g terminated this fragment here addition of a dd atp terminated this fragment here addition of dd ctp terminated this fragment here addition of dd ttp and so on Okay, so then the, these different fragments are arranged from the smallest to the largest, okay, from the smallest uh, to the largest. 
So basically, each terminal DDNTP, okay, each of these terminal DDNTP, uh, what they what they correspond? They correspond to a specific nucleotide in the original sequence. So shortest fragment must must terminate at first nucleotide from prime prime end, and second shortest fragment must must terminate at second nucleotide from prime prime end. There, therefore, by reading uh, the gel bands from smallest to the largest, we can determine our uh, DNA sequence. Okay. So then, each of these, each of these DDNTPs, each of these DDNTPs, they correspond to the uh, uh, the sequence in our original strands. Okay, for this uh, particular sequencing reaction, what is the strand sequence from five prime to three prime end? Okay, five prime to three prime end. This would be G A C T A G, as shown here. Okay, G A C T A G. So from smallest to the largest so that that will correspond to five prime to three prime sequence of uh, the dna so uh, after the sequencing analysis and reconstruction so this we know that okay this is the sequence so we can actually compare it to the reference sequence if we have and if it matches that's well and good that we have the correct uh, plasmid sequence let's say okay so now moving further so what are the applications of a sanger sequencing Sanger sequencing has been widely used in research purposes uh, for targeting smaller genomic regions in a large number of samples, sequencing of variable regions, validating results from next generation sequencing studies, verifying plasmid sequences, inserts, mutations, HLA typing, genotyping of microsatellite markers, and last but not the least, identifying single disease causing genetic variants. I hope this video was helpful. Thank you.